Hello folks, welcome back to the Astroform channel and thanks for tuning in. In this particular episode we're going to discuss what's in the night sky for the month of November 2020. So without further ado, let's get into the video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Wido Oerlemans and I'm an amateur astrophotographer living in Utrecht, the Netherlands, where I perform my astrophotography from a light polluted backyard. And on my channel I share gear reviews and tips and tricks on how to capture and process your deep sky astrophotography images. If you like that kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking on the button on the bottom right of the screen. Always highly appreciate it. And now that's out of the way, let's move on with the video. I will first start with showing you some interesting comets and near Earth objects that are in the night sky for November 2020. Then I will move on by showing you the positions of the planets and also some very nice conjunctions between the moon and the planets within our own solar system. Uh, thereafter I will show you some very interesting deep sky objects that you can image in November for both the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. And last but not least I want to show you some incredible pictures you shared with me using my hashtag Night Sky Astro Forum, hashtag NSSPO on Instagram. So we have an interesting new comet in our solar system, Comet Atlas M3, currently at observed magnitude 8.7 in the constellation Orion. It will reach its closest position to Earth on the 14th of November in 2020. And if you have a telescope with a focal length of let's say 7 or 800 millimeters or up, I think you can definitely capture this comet in the night sky. So as for other near-Earth objects, I'm happy to report that the closest objects to Earth in November 2020 will be <laughs> the Moon. Uh, there are no other asteroids that come closer to Earth as compared to the distance between Earth and the Moon. And finally, for those of you who are interested in the location of the Tesla Roadster, it is currently about 50 million kilometers away from Earth in the constellation Fishes, and it is about 21 million kilometers away from Mars. So when looking at the positions of the planets, I'm happy to report that both Venus and Mercury as our inner planets, they will reappear as morning stars in the night sky. Both will appear in the constellation Virgo. You can look towards the east early on in the morning. Venus will rise uh, first, uh, followed one hour later by Mercury. And especially Venus is pretty bright. It's a very bright object in the night sky, currently at magnitude minus four. So you might want to take advantage of that and take a nice picture of Venus early on in the morning. Uh, when we look at the outer planets, of course, Mars is still visible in the night sky in November, but it's past its opposition. It will be located in the constellation Fishes and it will move from east to west throughout the night. And of course, Mars is now uh, moving further away from Earth. Currently, it is at magnitude minus two, but towards the end of November, it will be at magnitude minus one. So if you want to capture Mars, it's best to do that as quickly as possible. And both Jupiter and Saturn, they are located in the constellation Sagittarius. In November, you know, it's an Asian tribe uh, in the series uh, Battlestar Galactica. Um, and they will only be visible early on in the evening. Look towards the west. Both Jupiter and Saturn will be visible, but they will set early during the night. So there are also three very interesting conjunctions for the month of November in the night sky. So the first conjunction will happen between the moon and Venus and will be visible early on in the morning on Thursday the 13th of November. Just look towards the southeast when you are in the northern hemisphere. Look towards the northeast when you are in the southern hemisphere. Um, the moon and Venus will be about three arc degrees apart so it will easily fit in the field of view of a regular DSLR camera with a 50 millimeter lens for instance. And um, what is interesting is that the moon is waning and it's only illuminated for about 6%. So you have this nice sliver of the moon uh, together with a very bright morning star Venus in the night sky. So a nice opportunity to capture that with a DSLR camera. A second uh, conjunction that is interesting appears on Thursday the 19th of November and will be between the moon Saturn and Jupiter. It will happen early on in the evening 
and the bodies are about two and a half arc degrees apart with a moon that is about 25% illuminated. It's a waxing moon. So again, you will have this nice crescent moon, still a little bit waxing moon, uh, together with Jupiter and Saturn, which will fit in the field of view of a regular DSLR camera. So nice opportunity on the 19th of November as well. And the final conjunction will happen on Wednesday, the 25th of November, um, between the moon and Mars. And this will be visible throughout the night actually. And the moon will be very bright, it will be 84% illuminated. It's a waxing moon. And uh, the moon and Mars will be about four and a half degree apart. So you, with a wider uh, lens, I would say maybe also a 50 millimeter lens or less, you will be able to capture both a big moon with Mars in your field of view. So when talking about deep sky objects that are visible from both the northern and the southern hemisphere, the most important thing to report is that the winter triangle will be visible again in November. So we're talking about Betelgeuse, Procyon and Sirius, this triangle in the night sky. And of course, then we will also be able to see the constellation Orion with incredible, very famous deep sky objects such as the Orion Nebula, the Horsehead Nebula, uh, visible from the Northern Hemisphere when you look towards the Southeast early on in the evening. Uh, and look towards the northeast when you are in the southern hemisphere basically. And of course there are still some other very nice objects in the night sky as well in November. So think for instance uh, of the Pleiades and the Andromeda galaxy. They are still visible in the month of November. So if you are a northy like me and you live in the northern hemisphere, I would strongly advise you to focus on the constellation Cassiopeia in November 2020 as well, because you can image some incredible deep sky object there, such as the Heart Nebula, <laughs> the Fish Head Nebula, and also of course the Soul Nebula and the Pac-Man Nebula. So for the Southern Hemisphere, there are some very nice deep sky objects when you look towards the south in the night sky. So the Eta Carina Nebula, for instance, it will rise again in the night sky. Uh, also the Southern Pleiades are visible and also the Running Chicken Nebula. And of course, the small and large Magellanic Clouds are all objects that are very interesting to capture when you look towards the south during the evening in November 2020. So thank you so much for sharing all of your hard work, all of your pictures with me using my hashtag Night Sky Astro Forum NS Espo on Instagram. And I saw that already over 600 pictures were shared. So thank you so much for that. I really think this is awesome. I do want to make a comment though, because I saw some of the pictures, some accounts, they post pictures that are not actually being made by themselves. So I want to reiterate here that hashtag NS Espo is actually made by Astro photographers for astrophotographers. So I want people that have put in all of the hard work, they have captured the deep sky object, they have processed that picture themselves. And then it, and hashtag NSESPO is all about inspiring other astrophotographers to take a look at your work and inspire each other. So please, if you don't make the pictures yourself, uh, stop sharing them on hashtag NSESPO. <laughs> there are millions of other hashtags that you can use. So. Um, Thanks for that and let's look at three incredible pictures that will were shared with me in the month of October on hashtag NSESPO. So let's first take a look of this incredible picture of Maurizio Cristiano de Souza. Uh, he made a picture of NGC 6188. It's an emission nebula in the constellation Ara. And actually it is his longest project so far. So he has more than 66 hours of exposure time on this nebula. And so when I'm talking about putting in the hard work, this is actually what I mean. It's incredible. And with that uh, exposure time, he could actually create an almost noise free image and he used the uh, EQ6R Pro mount, the ZW1600 Mono Pro camera and a Meet 80 millimeter telescope, the 6000 series. So incredible uh, Mauricio, very well done and thanks for sharing your incredible picture of NGC 6188 with me. So you probably know I always like to share pictures that are also a little bit out of the box and this is a picture made by Nuri of the Pleiades 
And it's a very creative picture because you can see, hey, the Pleiades are a little offset towards the edge of the picture with a nice star field. So that's very creative. And I also want to emphasize that you don't necessarily need a telescope and a big mount to make these kind of pictures. So in Nuri's case, he just used a Canon EF24 to 105 millimeter lens, an F4 lens, uh, with his Canon EOS 5D. Uh, on a mount which is actually the Sky Watcher Star Adventurer uh, and the Manfrotto mount. So you can see that um, yeah, these mobile mounts and putting a camera on a mobile tracking mount really is enough to make a, such an incredible picture. Um, he took 22 frames uh, of 180, so about three minutes each. Uh, so the accumulation time was a little over one hour. So very nicely done, Nuri. Thank you so much for sharing your very creative picture of the Pleiades with me. So I wanted to end with a picture that's quite the opposite of the wide field picture we were just looking at. So, so this is Kyle from Astro Photos. He makes his pictures from St. Catherine's. And this is NGC 7331, an incredible picture that shows you a group of galaxies in the constellation Pegasus. And he used a ZWO ASI 183 Mono Pro camera together with some uh, LRGB, so broadband bottom filters. And uh, yeah, he also made this picture through his MEET telescope, the LX210 inch ACF telescope. So you can see also that it is really nice to make some deep sky astrophotography pictures with telescopes that have a very long focal length. Uh, incredible job, Kyle. Thank you so much for sharing that with us on hashtag NSSFO. So I thought it would be fun to zoom in on a particular patch of the night sky for NSSFO in November 2020, if you have the opportunity, of course. Um, and I thought it would be fun to focus on the winter triangle. So Betelgeuse, Procyon and Sirius. Um, and you can do different stuff. So you might want to take a wide field picture of the constellation Orion, or you want to zoom in on the Orion Nebula, the Flame Nebula, or the Horsehead Nebula, that is awesome as well. Or you might want to check up on our dying star Betelgeuse. Uh, very interesting what's happening over there. And I look very much forward to seeing your pictures of the Winter Triangle in November 2020. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel by clicking on the button on the bottom right of the screen. Always highly appreciated. I hope to see you again in one of my other videos. And until then, I want to wish you clear skies. Bye-bye.